he was just like, why are there like a hundred spoons on the bed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, that's what we're doing on a video. Hi lovelies, so today I am going to be talking about the spoon theory. I first wanted to talk about uh, the reason why I think that this is so important and something that I ran into and I find myself still running into is I talk about being in pain or having migraines or being up all night and I throw out fibro or FM or fibromyalgia and I don't actually really explain to people what's going on with me. So I might say, oh, I have chronic pain, but I don't necessarily say I have fibromyalgia. This is what fibromyalgia is like. This is why I can't really commit to hanging out or commit to anything for that matter. It's also really hard for someone that's healthy to understand. I mean, I don't think I would have a really hard time when I was healthy understanding. If I'm having an honest moment, I would probably be really bitchy to myself and kind of judge, I'd be really judgmental. And to be honest, I, w I probably wouldn't be friends with myself. I came across the spoon theory a while ago and I freaking loved it. It made so much sense to me and it's a constant reminder to me also that I need to express to people what's going on in my life. And Lindsay is actually the one person that I talk about I don't know if I said her name, but it was way back in one of my vlogs that she was the first and pretty much only friend that <laughs> she just pretty much in her way, Lindsay was like, hey, so I know you have fibro, but like, what is, what's, what is wrong with you? Not like in a rude way, but like, tell me what she said, tell me what you experienced so that I can be a better friend to you, which still like, uh, every time it gets me. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> ah, okay. Every time it gets me, because especially with my codependency, I never really thought that I would have friends that like care that much about me that they would sit and listen to me complain about. Um, I said, "Don't make me cry." <laughs> so I thought it'd be really cool to do this with Lindsay because to me, a lot of times I'll joke with people and I'll say, "Just Google it. Just Google fibromyalgia." But that's not what my friends, my true friends, want to know. They want to know what I experience. They don't want to look at a list of symptoms. They want to know which of those symptoms I experience. Like, what is your day like? How do you want me to treat you? And how can I connect to you? He doesn't know about the spoon theory, right? You've never heard of it or read the uh, I have story no anything. idea what we're doing. Okay, awesome. I think she's going to learn a lot, and I think I'm going to learn a lot, because this is the first time I've actually ever done it really with a person. So, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> what? the spoon theory is we're gonna go through your day here are 12 spoons this is your day so you have 12 spoons for the day you can't have any more just those 12 take us through one of your days I woke up at 8 and I made breakfast so first off let's just start with you woke up so I'm gonna take a spoon because just waking up itself is really difficult. It takes a long time and we also don't necessarily get much sleep and that's gone forever. So now you're going to go make breakfast. You need to have breakfast or something in your system so that you can take your medication. What, you're gonna pour cereal? Okay, so hand me another spoon. <laughs> Sorry. You're giving me like the littlest one. <laughs> You're like, this is this one. Now what next? Took a shower and got ready. So you're going to decide to take a shower today. Yeah. What are you doing in the shower? Wash my hair and my body. Since you didn't shave, I'm just going to take one spoon. Okay. If you were to shave and wash your hair and wash your body, I would take two spoons for you. Because that's really a lot to do. Now what? Brush my hair and put my uniform on. You brushed your hair. Give me a spoon. Maria has small legs. You just, just give me the tiniest spoon. Look at how much she has. Did you brush your teeth? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No? <laughs> Ain't a man. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, you put your uniform on, mm -hmm. your scrubs. That's a spoon. Um, 
that this is the last total spoon she has. It's a big one, getting dressed. It's a big decision because you have to decide whether you want something comfy. Even with scrubs, it would be something like if it's more constricting because sometimes you have scrubs that are a little bit smaller and some that are a little bit bigger. And I'm like, I can't wear a regular bra. I have to wear like a soft bra. So it's a process. So that's another spoon. How are we doing? Drive 30 minutes to work. So she's going in sizes. <laughs> so driving is a huge one, especially 30 minutes. I would probably take two spoons, but that's a big spoon. <laughs> it's not the size that matters, Linz. We've gotten to work. We've gotten to work, Linz, and you have right. one, two, three, four, five spoons left for the whole rest of the day. What time is it? 11, so I'd be dead at noon. <laughs> Linz would be deceased. <laughs> so we've gotten to work. Now what are we doing? Woo! Are we standing? Are we sitting? Oh, we stand the whole eight hours. So you stood and worked until lunch, right? Is that two? Okay, so until two, I need another spoon. So two of the research is inside. Okay, so what did you do for lunch? Did you eat? Yes. I went to the cafe down the hall and I got half of a chicken wrap carrots and fruit. Healthy! Just have to show off on my channel that you eat so healthy. Okay, so lunch is a spoon. Um, it's very important to take either snacks or food because um, depending on how much pain you're in or what you're experiencing, you're going to need to be taking your medication throughout the day or <clears throat> at least maintaining your kind of stomach because it's pretty much always upset got to lunch. You have three spoons left. I worked until seven. I feel really bad that you only have three spoons left. <laughs> this is getting hard. Okay, so let's say you worked till and then you drove home. Right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a spoon. Technically, I would take two spoons, but that's okay. I see you have two spoons left and it's what time? If it's a normal day, it's like 8 p.m. Okay. So it's 8 p.m. and you are home. What happens next? Dinner. So we're just you're gonna have dinner. Yeah. That's a spoon. Are you making something small? Are you making something big? Take out. Okay. So on the way home. <laughs> also, meals are super difficult and exhausting because most of the time you're gonna be nauseated by that time, especially after a drive. So if you need to make anything or pick something up, it's going to be pretty difficult and you still need to be able to take your nighttime meds. So that's a big, big spoon. <laughs> you decided to eat dinner. Congratulations. Now what are you going to do with your one spoon? Wash my face and brush my teeth and hop in bed. That's too many things. I didn't wear makeup, so wash my, I mean, brush my teeth. So you're just going to brush your teeth and hop in bed. Yes with your scrubs on. I sleep naked. Oh, I okay, guess that works out well then. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd need another spoon to get into your pajamas. Yeah, I don't wear, I really don't wear pajamas to bed. Sorry, TMI. This means that you don't have any spoons left for hanging out with friends, for reading a book, washing your face, looking on your iPhone, watching a movie, watching TV, anything else. So once you got home from work, you're done. You eat and then you're done. Mm -hmm. Say you decided to do one of those things, decide to say, hang out with a friend. She might have a 30 minute drive. This is the tomorrow. So you're gonna take this out of there, out of your reserves and then say, Walk on the beach. And you're going with your scrubs. <laughs> and your scrubs, no makeup, but your teeth are brushed, so that's okay. Whatever you decide to do with your friends, walk on the beach. Another spoon. Walk on the beach, that's probably going to be two spoons. Because <laughs> that's exercise as well as doing something. Then you have your drive home. You end up the next day with two, four, six, eight spoons. So can you imagine My whole you day gave up? Spoons. You gave up. I couldn't eat breakfast. 
or lunch or dinner or take a shower probably or yeah shower so I'd be dirty smelly and hungry <laughs> <laughs> you just explained someone with chronic pain <laughs> that is me that's like that's the limited um, amount of energy that someone with chronic pain has now when you just have energy to go and do whatever you want and you don't have to think about spoons you have unlimited spoons you can oh. do your makeup and do your hair and go hang out with your friends and I'm always skimming my spoons especially like I'm taking my spoons from the next day and if that continues to happen you end up some days where you have two spoons and those are my days where I don't function. You do have to be really mindful of what you put your energy into. So, so how did you feel about that? I like it. I like that you explained where my streams were going because it made me more aware of what I wanted to do. Well, in my head, I was like, oh, if I gotta get my spoon, well, I'm not wearing makeup. <laughs> Definitely not driving more than 30 minutes because that's too soon. <laughs> then at the end, that's when it hit me because I was like, oh shoot, she's going into the next day. And that's when I was like, that's true. First time me and M hung out, I did not know that she had fibro. And we went to Forever 21. And so she tried on like, I don't know, like maybe like three outfits or something. We were leaving there and I just happened to grab the bags. But she thought I was carrying them for her, which... I was, but that wasn't like my intention. So she looked at me and she was just like, oh, thank you so much. I'm so tired. And in my head, I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> like we just went to the mall and we tried on glues. Maybe she means like she didn't sleep last night or something. I don't know. But see, on my mind, she saved me a spoon by carrying yeah. my stuff. And in my mind, I'm like, what the hell is Weirdo. going on? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I was just like. Okay, so she's like, she has problems. <laughs> like, so, she got some, problems. Something's wrong with her. So that is really what made, prompted me to ask Emily, finally, like, dude, I've noticed that you're weird. <laughs> and, like, you get tired after we do one thing. Like, what is wrong with you? And I didn't say it that way that night. I don't understand, but, like, I want to be a good friend, so I'm trying to understand. And then she, like, explained it. And I was like, whoa, I had no idea because she's awesome about not complaining and not whining and you do need to tell your friends but she sometimes doesn't do that i really like it it makes sense to me i don't understand that when we go to the movies on friday night but we don't see you till sunday night that saturday was rest day for real the other day Lynn's woke up and she was just like rubbing her eyes and i felt like she was out of a movie because she just woke up and she'd already looked at facebook and like liked some of my pictures on instagram like you know, and just like got up and started getting stuff for the animals and doing some chores and she was already lining up her day and like you don't really think about it because you're just like, I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing and I have work and then afterwards if I get a text or maybe I'll ask someone to hang out and you just like don't think about all these little tiny steps that go into things. Like literally when I take a shower, I have to decide, okay, can I take a shower? Then can I wash my hair? Mm -hmm. Can I wash my body? Can I shave? I mean, there's so many things. Like, how, how long am I going to be able to stand in the shower? Am I going to have to sit in the shower? Do I have to take a bath? I mean, there's like five different things that go into taking a shower when before it was just like, do shower. it and blow dry your hair. I can't even remember the last time I blew dry my hair. <laughs> That's pretty. Thanks. But I hope this helped you guys. I think it's an awesome, awesome, awesome way to explain it to people in mm -hmm. a way that's fun and that makes it a little bit more understandable. Thank you, Lynn, for doing this. High five. I hope you guys got something out of this. Please share this. You never know who is silently suffering. I hope this video helps you and possibly your caregivers. Um, I hope it helps you maybe explain what's going on with you because it truly is really almost impossible to difficult to explain to someone else what goes on in your body especially with things like fibro and lupus and me and chronic fatigue they have to google it are not going to come up like you can't google a person that's what your friends really want to know is that like personal thing like the carrying my bags will save a spoon for me so i hope you guys really like this i hope you guys have a pain-free stress-free day we're sending out x the blues bye, bye. guys
Dia's like really clutching these big ones, especially. <laughs> Soon.